right. Can you tell me what to read? Yeah. Yes. And we're going to be talking about computed radiography. Okay, anybody else want to put the recorders up here? It, yeah, causes, yeah, the, all this discoloration. What it's actually doing is when it gets discolored like that or the stain, you start to lose a lot of the fine definitions of the image. So well, it begins to fade out. The, when you wash also, if you don't have enough washing on the film, you get the uh, discoloration. You can the because there's still fixer remaining so in there. How do you know which one is which? You don't. Okay. You, just, you just know that it's, it's caused by either you have, uh, you have not enough fixer in there or the wash is, is, has been improperly done, so fixer remains in there. So you have to just guess. Yeah, you just have to guess. Right. But again, you won't know until later on, until maybe weeks or months down the line, when you see any effects in your image that something is, is something wrong. But by then, you should have caught the problem because of your daily QC that you do with your processor. Does that make sense? So, like I said, by the time the the um, appearance and starts to manifest itself, by then the problem should have already been fixed. And daily QC, you mean like the, the daily monitoring? Daily QC, we're like talking about the, the sensitometry. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay? You're welcome. Okay, let me just make sure I, I need to do someone's recording here real quick, so I want to make sure I'm doing this right. It looks like I am. Okay. Um, so we're going to be closing off here with Unit 3. Um, what we'll be talking about today is computed radiography. So up until to, to this point, we've been talking about film processing. Now we're going to be talking about how uh, computerized images are generated and how is it that we bring about the latent image. Um, now what you're going to find here is there are many similarities to that of film processing. The only difference is, is that it's digital. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Computer radiography is basically a, a generic term that utilizes computer software, algorithms, mathematic formulas to convert an analog signal into a digital si signal. What we're going to be including here is what's known as a photostimulable phosphor screen, or PSP. PSP. The two cassettes look very different. I mean, very, very same. So they both house the image receptor on both. Now, again, up until this point, we were talking about the cassette with film. Okay? This is for film processing. Now, what we're going to be talking about here is also a cassette, but instead of film, we have what's known as your PSP screen. The photostimulable phosphor screen. Okay. 
Now the PSP screen is what's actually going to acquire the x-ray projection from the patient. All right. Furthermore, instead of a processor, we have what is known as a reader. Okay. The reader is what extracts the image from this PSP okay, by taking the analog signal and converting it into a digital signal as a result of the digital image popping up on your display screen. Okay. And then lastly, we need our computer and software program to make that conversion. So we'll go with that here in just a moment here individually. So as I said earlier, the difference between screen film imaging, that's your film, and your computed radiography or CR, is that both use an X-ray sensitive image receptor. In this case, we're talking about cassettes. One cassette has film. The other cassette will contain the photostimulable phosphor. Okay. Both can be used interchangeably with your X-ray equipment, meaning that we don't have to exchange or degut our X-ray rooms. We can use the same equipment. The only thing that's different is how the images are extracted, but we can keep the same X-ray unit. You guys following me so far? Both carry a latent image that must be made visible by processing. Okay? Regardless of it's film or computerized, the, film, the image still has to be processed. So this is where they differ. One uses film, the other one uses the PSP. Okay, you guys follow so far? All right. First, let's talk about computerized radiography. We've got, who's this guy right here? Wilhelm wow. Conrad Rankin. Commercially introduced in 1983, so this is fairly new, fairly new. Over 10,000 systems are used clinically worldwide in about 44 countries. Now, this slide was, I need to update the information here, but this slide was just done about two years ago. And as we know, technology moves very, very rapidly. So even with two years, I'm sure these numbers have increased <laughs> multiply, okay? CR technology is based on certain halide-based phosphors having energy storage and excitation characteristics known as photostimulable luminescence. In film, what are you going to find in the film's emulsion? The silver halide crystals. The silver halide crystals. Okay? Silver halide crystals. In the PSP, okay, in the PSP, you're going to find your barium fluor halide. Okay, it's halide based. Amber alert. Okay. All right, so these phosphors in the PSP have a characteristic known as PSL, photostimulable luminescence. When the x-rays interact with the screen, the crystals, the halide-based crystals that we're talking about here, is going to store that energy until it is scanned at a later time. I'm going to go through this step by step so you have better understanding. Why didn't anybody tell me that my screen went off? Uh, you just did? Yeah. I, you know, that's too coincidental, right? <laughs> All right, so these, these, again, crystals have this characteristics known as PSL which allows these, the crystals to store the x-ray energy until they're scanned at a later time, okay? So then the PSP, again we're talking about the screen, is positioned within the cassette or the imaging plate, okay? So it is in the cassette. 
The commonly used phosphor, as I said earlier, is known as barium fluorohalide. Highlight that. So instead of your silver halide crystals in your film's emulsion, now we have barium fluorohalide within the turbid structure of the PSP screen. Turbid just means muddy. Okay, the emulsion is gelatin-like. The PSP is mud-like. Okay, but each of them contain the crystals. Okay, am I going too fast? Okay, let's keep on going. When the photostimulable phosphor, the PSP screen, is exposed to x-rays, remember what I said, it's going to store some of that energy. Okay? After the exposure, the imaging plate okay, will now be inserted into a reader to extract the image. So, let's go back to film. With film, I have to go to the dark room, open up my cassette, take my film out, and put it through the processor. Okay? With computerized radiography, it's all automatic. What is going to happen is this cassette. This cassette will be placed in our reader. We have two of them in the back. Okay, we have two workstations. So my cassette will be placed into the reader like so. And everything is just automatic from that point on because it's going to open up the cassette, take my PSP out, okay? The next step is that it's going to be scanned by a red laser beam. Okay, remember what I said, the crystals now have the stored x-ray energy in it? You guys remember me saying that? The next step here is that this PSP is going to get scanned by a red laser beam. What it's doing when it's doing that is it's trying to release the stored energy from those crystals. <clears throat> and what ends up happening is those crystals start emitting a blue-violet light related to the amount of exposure that it received. Okay, so now as it's being scanned, the crystals are gonna emit a blue-violet light. Okay. So, screen is removed, scanned by the laser beam. The crystals then start to emit a blue-violet light. Remember the characteristic PSL, photostimulable luminescence? This is what it's doing. It's releasing the blue-violet light. <clears throat> okay. Now this light, the light energy is an analog signal. The light energy is considered the analog signal. This light, an analog signal, is now going to go to a photomultiplier tube. What's photo? Light. Light. What's multiplier? Multiplies, right? Many amplifies, multiplies. Okay, so it's going to take the light signal and amplify it. Okay, and then it's going to go to a converter which converts a light signal into an electrical signal for image display. Okay, and it looks something like this. You put your cassette in the image reader. Okay? The PSP is removed. Well, that's pretty cool. The PSP <laughs> is removed. Now it gets scanned by the red laser light. As it's being scanned, the crystals are going to emit what? A blue violet. A blue violet light. It is a light that then goes into your photo multiplier tube, your PMT, to amplify the light signal. To amplify the light signal. Boom. Okay? It then goes into an analog to digital converter. Okay? 
and simply your image pops up on the screen. That's as simple as I'm going to keep it. All right. You will learn the more specifics when you guys do 148 when you get into the program. 148. All right. Any questions here? The electronic signal, like we said, is converted into a digital format for manipulation, enhancement, viewing, and if we wanted to make a hard copy of the images, we can. But the images are just simply displayed on a screen. There's no need for us to make hard copies anymore. Okay? Here's the next step. Unlike film, that if you put film under light, what happens to put if you put film under light? It gets exposed, right? Right? With the PSP, we're actually using light to erase our screen to be used again. Okay? So after the image is extracted, okay, now the PSP gets scanned with a very intense white light to remove the remaining energies from the crystals. Okay? to remove the remaining energies from the crystals so the screen can be used 10,000 times over. Wow. Many, many times. So once it is erased, then it puts it back into the cassette. We take our cassette out of the reader and it's ready to be used again. Less than 20 seconds is all it takes. 20 seconds for the whole process. <clears throat> okay? 20 seconds. So the high intensity white light dumps all the remaining energy, allowing the plate to be reused thousands of times over. It could have, uh, and we actually have a lab in which we take, we take a, an x-ray, we take our PSP out and we just leave it under white light, put it back into our cassette and see if there's any remaining images on here. So it's a practice that we do in our labs. Okay, do we have any questions? <coughs> all right. Additional equipment that we may need is more, more readers. We've got two of them. Our readers only does one plate at a time, which is fine because we're doing it in a controlled classroom environment. It's not a hospital. We don't need to get our images quickly. Okay. Um, more imaging plates. Okay. Uh, a workstation for us to manipulate our images. So the images come up, so now we, let's do some things to it. We can enlarge it, shrink it, flip it, reverse the negative image into a positive image. We can crop it, we can sharpen it, we can adjust the brightness and the contrast. You see where I'm going with this? It's like Photoshopping. Okay? All right, a laser printer in case we needed to make a hard copy. Again, most of the time we don't need to. So all the images can be extracted from the display screen. And not just one, one display screen, we can look at the same image in multiple stations throughout the hospital. Okay? Or we can look at the images simultaneously from one hospital to another clinic or hospital in the next city, in the next state, in the next country, okay? in the next universe. <laughs> you know where I'm going? Okay. So that is the advantage of this, is that when we had film, okay, the problem with film is that it can only be looked at in one department at a time. So if you had an x-ray done in x-ray, the x-rays are kept there until the physician was done with those images. And then if the ICU doctor wanted to look at them, he or she would either have to go to the ER or the films would get transported from one department to his department. And in the meanwhile, films can get lost. Or damaged. Or damaged, okay? But again, one at a time, and they can get lost. So that was the main problem with the film. So are, are more hospitals converting to this? Stuff? Well, at least our hospitals are now. Um, all our hospitals now have gone digital as of two years ago. Prior to that, we, there were still a couple of hospitals that were still using film. Now, with that said, 
We still cover film and chemicals because there are still a lot of facilities out there that utilize chemical processing. Not everybody has made the transition. So until that time they say, okay, well, we don't need to include the chemical part of our lectures anymore, then we'll drop it. But in the meanwhile, we're going to continue to do that until everybody or majority of facilities and institutions have made the transition. The other part of this is that if you do know both chemical processing and digital processing, it makes you more marketable because you know both. All right, that's the other advantage. All right, an archive server, a web server to store images and to transmit our images, okay? Then we have a film digitizer. It doesn't happen overnight where we convert from film to digital. We're still gonna have film images within our archives. So we gotta take all those films and put it through a scanner so they can be stored digitally in our computers. All right, once that happens, then we can get rid of our film. Okay, but we can't do that until all the images have been uh, transferred into a computer system or archiving system. All right? Do they get any stain or something? Stain? No. Nothing. No, we don't have the same problems as we do with film. Not at all. And like I said, because it's computerized, if we don't like it, we just hit a button. Or we hit the mouse or scroll. We can change the brightness again, brightness, contrast, sharpness, okay, those things. However, there are certain things that we can't control where it does require us to repeat the exam again. But it has, our, a number of repeats have decreased dramatically because of computerized radiography. Okay, so here's another example of computers in, in your <coughs> workstation. Uh, this is a reader. The picture that I showed you of ours only takes one cassette at a time. This can take anywhere between, I think, 15 to 18 cassettes at a time, reading it simultaneously. So this is a very productive hospital right here. 18 to 20, 15, 20 uh, images all at one time, 20 seconds apiece. Okay, that's high volume. Okay. Again, different types of readers. So the reader is going to replace the dark room and processor. So we are thinking about cutting our dark room in half for film because we can utilize the other half of the dark room for something else. So it, it, it gives us back our space. Instead of view boxes, we have our uh, diagnostic viewers. And it does remove a lot of the, the clutter and extra space. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the PSP screen, the photostimulable screen, okay? Like film, it also comes in different layers, all right? First layer here is the protective layer. The protective layer is very thin, tough, clear plastic that protects the phosphor layer. So this is just the very outside of it. And if you notice, there is a kind of a sheen to it. Very shiny. Okay, that's your protective layer. The next layer here is going to be your active layer, which contains the phosphors. And the phosphors that we're using here is PSP. Oh. The what is what are they called? The barium. Barium yeah. fluoro halide. Okay, <coughs> the barium fluoro halide. Okay. The barium fluoro halide also contains light absorbing dye to prevent light spread. Okay, prevent light spread, which means that we can control the diffusion of the light, which controls the speed of the screen. Remember back when we talked about film? If it has a light absorbing dye, it makes the detail better or worse? Better. better. Much, much better. So it slows it down a little bit, okay? But insignificantly. Okay, it's just a slight change, but you will see here that it does cancel each other out when we talk about the other layers. Next layer here is the support layer. The support layer is the semi-rigid material that gives the imaging sheet some strength and supports the phosphor layer. So, okay, this is your support layer. The reflective layer, you guys remember the reflective layer? Okay, so the phosphors are going to emit light. 
in all different directions. What we want is we want the light going into the photomultiplier so we can convert the light signal into a digital signal. Otherwise, that light signal gets wasted, right? So it is going to catch the wayward light being emitted and redirect it to the photomultiplier. Does this make it the system faster or slower? Faster. Faster, everybody agree? It makes it faster because now we are using twice as many light signals. Okay, it doubles the efficiency. Some detail is lost, but remember, it cancels each other out because of the light absorbing dye that we had in the previous slide. Okay, is it still a good system? It's a dang good system. The images that come out when it comes up on the display screen is so detailed, so pretty, so nice. Okay, it's just, you, you can't, it's, it's unmatched compared to film. So all these things are already embedded into it already? It's already in here. It's already in here. Yes. Okay, the last two layers here, you got the lead backscatter to control any backscatter. And then we've also got the backing layer, it's the soft polymer in the back of the cassette that uh, controls, that, I'm sorry, that supports also the, the, the PSP, okay? Any questions? That's all you need to know. Okay, as we said, the imaging plate can be used with existing x-ray equipment. <clears throat> Let's talk about pixels. You guys know what pixels are? Okay, pixel stands for picture elements. Basically, it's a grid with dots or squares, and each of those dots or squares can give you a, uh, a predetermined shade of white or black or your different shades of grays in between. Okay, so if you imagine this to be your display screen, each of the little squares or little dots, once the image is extracted and we're sending it to the display screen, each of the box will determine the degree of darkness for each of the pixels or squares. Okay, which will look something similar to this. Again, bone will be white. Soft tissue will be gray, air will be black, just like in x-rays, just like in film, all right? And when you put all these small boxes or circles or dots together, you get an image that looks something like that, okay? And the bottom line is the more dots or squares that you have per inch, the smaller the dots, which means that you can accommodate more squares in an area to give it what? Better detail or worse detail? Better detail. Better detail. Because when you buy a TV screen, whether it be a computer or TV, you're looking for something that has a lot of DPIs, dots per inch, right? So the more dots per inch or pixel elements, picture elements that a screen has, the better the detail of the image. Okay, any questions? This is pixels.